Okay, I can't drop them. I can't drop them. I Welcome. How are you? Hi. Lisa Mosinski. How are you? We're going to see all those parts of parking lot with her every more fire thing. We have to follow up. I yeah, you have those headphones? I may need those headphones, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so we have um, splitter jacks on the first lane, so we can both listen to it. Oh, yeah. So, we want to make a quick announcement today. That what? That we're broadcasting the current. The audio is going out. You want to drop the audio? <laughs> So what's the best spot here? <laughs> oh, you're in charge of the screen. Um, I'm helping setting up the uh, the audio feed and broadcasting live over YouTube. Oh, I'm helping to get oh, so people don't even have to come. Yeah. No. For plug in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
I do it for a lot of people. Primarily, Okay, I'm fully aware that we're three minutes behind schedule right now, but because of the parking situation, we're the, we out there and we're just giving them a couple of minutes. We'll start in about a minute. Is that okay? Anybody have an objection to that? Is so she was a shop at Black jacket is Jack. Okay. okay. Okay, um, welcome, and we'll go ahead and get started now, hoping that other people will uh, stay come in, we'll be able to just sign in and find a spot. Um, welcome to the December 8th meeting for Market Neighborhood. I wanted you all to know that we are currently broadcasting live on the internet for those at home who are unable to attend our meeting. We do have some disabled people that that are watching from home. It should be if they can get logged in um, and listening to us and maybe even chat in if they have a question. So you're all live, so don't do the same thing that you don't want going out into the web. And then after the meeting, the video for the meeting will be posted on our website at www.markhamneighborhood.com and you can go back and review the video if you need to. So I hope everyone over here has signed in. If you have not, if you're not already pre-entered um, on that sheet, just add your name to the blank lines below. So my name is Donna Heron. I'm your current president of the Neighborhood Association until my term runs, and I'll have someone else will have to step up. Um, first on the agenda would be introductions. And uh, first on the introductions are our two dignitaries present, our guest speakers, which is uh, Kyle Chesick from Portland Bureau of Transportation. Welcome, Kyle. And Lisa Mozinski from the Bureau of Environmental Services. Welcome, Lisa. So next, I'd like to go around the room. And um, also, we have James Noble here, who is our uh, Southwest Neighborhoods Incorporated Public Safety Chair. And uh, he is from the Maplewood neighborhood. He is helping with the web um, online web meeting, getting us uh, situated, making sure it's running correctly before he may take off. So uh, 
after that, I'd like you to start going around the room with Kim and go this way and back and forth and just introduce yourself and maybe say the street you live on or something. Or how many of you have been here? Kim Heron has been here as long as Don has been here, uh, 20 years. This one's very happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is David Niederlow, 1840 Southwest Marigold. We're on the corner of where this uh, 19th Street project begins or ends. I'm Renata Niederlow. Mirza Lukman, I live on 35th and Cardinal Bridge Drive, 28 years. <coughs> uh, I'm Jeff Monaghan, I'm the um, Transportation rep for Markham neighborhood, and uh, also live on Primrose, um, just down the street from the project on Okay. <clears throat> Casper Wooder from 2710 Southwest Church Drive. We lived here since 1999. Welcome. Honey, Kevin, you're I don't live with that. No, uh, Ray Taylor, 1845 Southwest Church Drive. Welcome. Karen Hansen, what's that? 1893 South West 4th Street. I'm Steve Keating. We've been there for the last six months. Great, welcome. And you're next. I'm Bruce. Our uh, family that owns a property at uh, Primrose and Oak Creek, which has been the family. Great, welcome. And John, you're next. Uh, I'm John Gibbon. I'm your uh, Markham Land Use Representative. I'm also Chair of the Sweeney Land Use Committee. Uh, and I live at 9822 Southwest Quail Post Road, Quail Park. And we got one more in the corner. Hi, my name is Eric Matthews, and I own the house in 19, on that stuff with Orchid since 1994. Great. Welcome all. Um, I hope it wasn't too much trouble for you getting into the uh, school tonight because of the parking situation and the holiday event they have going on in the school. But, um, if more people come, we'll just hopefully uh, they'll find a way in here eventually. Uh, next on the agenda for tonight is the agenda approval. So has everybody picked up an agenda off the table? If not, Kyle or Kim can hand you one. Um, look it over. And uh, it looks like we're missing our treasurer, so I know that report will, will not happen. As well as Amanda Garcia uh, sent me a message right before the meeting, and she won't be here tonight, so that report won't go either. But if there's any changes, additions, or deletions on the agenda, please let me know and we'll approve it. And, uh, need a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Anyone second? Second. Okay, um, your name is? Casper Mooder. Casper, okay. Oh, it says we don't have a secretary tonight. I also have to go back and write that down. So <laughs> the camera doesn't look at you. I'm seeing you, but <laughs> the camera's not seeing you. We've, we've got it set this way so that you have your privacy if you want. Okay. Okay, so Casper seconded all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries and the agenda is approved. We don't have a police officer in attendance yet, but if one does show up, we will um, let them in on the next slot. We have a next transition available uh, so that they can give their report on crime and um, then leave if they have to. So, you're up. Next um, is Move forward here a little bit. Oh, uh, the meeting minutes. Since we don't have a secretary, this is kind of an unusual month. I was in the hospital at the last meeting, um, and we lost our secretary. So there wasn't a secretary from the time that I got back till now to do the minutes. So I will go through the tape um, and get it, and we'll do two minutes, two months worth of minutes at the next meeting. If has an objection, please let me know. Are acceptable? There weren't any motions of the last meeting other than to accept the agenda and adjourn, I think. Was, right, am I right, Jeff? 
So, so right. there shouldn't be anything uh, really objectionable about that. So, uh, Portland, please bear with skipping. If uh, all of you are from our neighborhood or very close, except for you two, you already know about this, this is part of it. Uh, this was what we saw this last summer at Barber Boulevard in 26. It's now completed, right, Lisa? Yeah. And, uh, but that's the little segue we have. Um, their next project coming up, I hope it's the very next one, is R Street 19, Southwest 19. This is looking up from Taylor's Ferry, and this is looking down from Marigold. So everybody has a picture in their mind as to where that is if you're not living on that street. There's a lot of people here that are from that street, but it kind of gives you an idea of where it is. And I think that's actually looking down from the bay. Jeff? I think that's actually looking down from the bay. The bay, is it? Yeah, because Mary Gold's at the bottom of those barriers. Oh, okay. Um, well, it was a year ago since I took that picture. So, <laughs> um, and actually, here's the uh, the map of where where the project is. And now we'll get into that. So um, let me introduce to you Kyle Cheswick from Portland Bureau of Transportation and Lisa Mosinski from the Bureau of Environmental Services. Great, thank, thank you. you. Um, so to give a little context, um, obviously you've all heard from Lisa before. They're doing uh, BES is doing a stormwater facility, um, fairly large one down at Taylor's Ferry and Southwest 19. Um, so in the past, uh, they would go through their projects and PBOT never had any funding to come to the table and, and basically do anything with local streets outside of the local improvement district process. Um, we actually had a local improvement district uh, proposed for Southwest 19th, um, Marigold, Primrose, and Orchid in the past, um, but that was prohibitively expensive. Um, so starting in about uh, 2008 to 2012, we wanted to take a look at how do we change um, not only our standards, but our process to make streets more affordable for people. And so in 2012, we changed uh, and created a shared street standard, um, which is basically 16 feet of pavement with gravel shoulder on either side. At that time, uh, after council adopted it, we consciously made the decision that we're not going to think about stormwater because we're the Transportation Bureau. We're going to leave that up to the Bureau of Environmental Services. So we left in there some room for some variation on how we address stormwater um, within that standard. Um, unfortunately, the new standard also didn't come with money, and it came with some other problems as well. One of them was that in the state of Oregon, you were... Um, prohibited from walking in the street, even on a local a local street that is uh, low volume, you're supposed to walk as far left as practical. So under a standard, you would be, or as far right as practical, sorry, um, you would be off of the gravel shoulder at the very edge, and, um, and it's not good for pedestrians, and it's not good for accessibility. Um, so we changed state law, um, and passed uh, basically for streets like these, uh, the city could designate a shared street. Uh, if they were built to certain standards, had uh, certain criteria for volume of vehicles on them, um, speeds of vehicles, and we could ensure that we could keep those speeds and volumes low in, in those cases. Still, no money. So uh, in this last budget, uh, uh, the current mayor, uh, provided uh, the Transportation Bureau with uh, basically around a million dollars to say, go out and figure out how you can pave streets, um, which finally we got some money. Um, we had, uh, in the meantime, also done neighborhood street plans. I'm sure you've heard of the Trans Stevens Creek Headwaters Plan. Um, we've done one in Division Midway, which is out around 122nd Division. Um, We've done a street plan in the Cully neighborhood. Uh, we've had conversations and basically done a street concept plan for Errol Heights neighborhood in front of Darlington. Um, and uh, we also have some information and it's a little out of date, but for the Woodstock neighborhood. So we've, we've done some work and some pre-planning on, you know, what would this look like if we were to somehow get money or neighbors would want to come forward and, um, and create an LID um, and uh, fund some street improvements. So 
we decided once we got this funding that we were going to move forward with um, the Errol Heights neighborhood. Uh, we had had the most conversations with them. Uh, we think that a local improvement district will work in the in that area. Um, there are still some issues we needed to work through, but we thought this might be a good area to show uh, how we can do uh, change dirt and gravel streets to um, to a paved surface. Take care of the stormwater issues. Uh, provide access for pedestrians, cyclists, transit riders, and um, uh, emergency vehicles, lift buses, things like that. Uh, and in a wider area, so we're not adversely impacting one street. So you have a dirt and gravel street, and it's surrounded by other dirt and gravel streets, and you pave that. That's where naturally people want to go. Um, since we've been at a concept level. Uh, we haven't actually built them, and it sounds a little strange uh, just because we have a lot of center strip paved streets around the city. We have a lot of streets without curbs um, that have been built over time that function as a shared street, uh, but we haven't technically built one to that standard. Um, so we looked at it, instead of scaling up for a large project where we're doing multiple streets at once, we wanted to select a test project where we could have a confined and controlled area where we could test our design assumptions, which we're pretty sure about. Those are fairly straightforward. Uh, we could test our cost assumptions, most importantly. Um, and we could um, test our relationship with BES and how we're going to divide up costs, how this is going to work, what are their stormwater needs, and how, what's the best conveyance system for the stormwater to reach a a uh, stormwater facility and, and those kinds of issues. And um, luckily enough, uh, BES was embarking on the uh, 19th and Taylor's Ferry stormwater facility. Uh, so a little background on that. Uh, I think BES was having some challenges on how to uh, design the stormwater facility uh, with all the dirt and gravel and sediment runoff coming off the dirt and gravel street. And I had people in my bureau approach me, found out, hey, you've got money now. Guess what? Um, we have this street. That's just for you. One of many people who has come to me and said they can help me spend the money, um, which is wonderful. Um, but uh, BES had a particular problem, and several things stood out about Southwest 19. First, they're already building a stormwater facility. So the stormwater is has been thought about and has been modeled, and it's also uh, it's it's moving forward. It was at 30% design, kind of between 30 and 60 in that range. Um, so they already had a good chunk of the work done on the stormwater piece. Uh, the second issue is um, we had a lot of people in the bureau going, well, you know, we don't do streets for people. People, property owners have to pay for their streets. Um, in this case. We're not removing a complete liability from any property owner. All the properties are corner properties. They're all fronting a different frontage as well. So there is still a liability that to improve your frontage. These are all basically, in general, people's side yards. So that was a, a good factor. The other thing is that we're dealing with a lot of the same kind of topography challenges. Um, you're also in what's called, uh, I believe, an MS4 area. So um, that's exactly similar to Errol Heights. Errol Heights is, is in one of those few areas that are like that in Southeast. So um, it had a lot of benefits for it. Um, what I proposed to the Bureau and what was accepted was that we're going to do this as a test project. We're going to evaluate it ahead of time and afterwards and see like where that. we have so, some um, challenges, where we can uh, make changes. Uh, does it work well for BES and for transportation? And also, um, what are ways we can keep costs low? Because ultimately, if we're using this in local improvement districts, or even frankly, just for the city, you know, this was designed to be a more affordable standard. And um, we want to keep it affordable. So where, where are ways we can turn costs, cut costs um, within the Bureau, either on design, survey, all sorts of uh, construction issues, uh, things like that. So it's the best practice standard. Um, and uh, the city would fully pay for it. 
uh, in this case on Southwest 19 uh, for those reasons. Uh, and that was accepted. So uh, I, we agreed uh, with BES that we would uh, provide the conveyance and reduce the sediment runoff that uh, was coming down to the facility at Southwest 19th and Taylor's Ferry. Um, and we would take care of the street portion. Um, the design that we have currently, so from Marigold down to Primrose, um, we have, how is it on the direction? Yes. So from Marigold to Primrose here, we have a curb on this side of the street. Uh, and in our discussions with Fire Bureau uh, and uh, emergency services, they said, you know, we are okay with having a curb on one side um, as long as it, uh, you can't park along that curb. Uh, because when a fire truck comes in and they're putting down their outriggers, they really want 20 feet. And if we've introduced a curb, they're not gonna get that on that one side. Um, so we're introducing a curb here to help with the stormwater conveyance coming down uh, to an inlet. And um, there will be a gravel shoulder on that side. It's what's called a shed section. So the water is designed to run into that curb and go down. Um, so that's uh, the first piece of it. Uh, the reason we put the curb on this side is because it's more of an uphill side. Um, it, the topography kind of falls off on the other side of here and we don't want to risk uh, having water infiltration, water flooding, those kind of problems on this side. Um, the gravel shoulder is intended for two reasons. One, um, it's an area for parking uh, because the pavement is narrow. Um, it is, uh, in, in cases with curves, we usually go to 18 feet, but it's 16 feet wide in general. Uh, and one is for parking, people can park out of the travelway. The other is it's designed to be what's called a queuing street. So two large vehicles are passing each other. Uh, one or both can pull off to the side and be able to pass each other safely. It's more comfortable for people. Um, technically, in 16 feet, you use average vehicle size to pass each other, but um, uh, lots of people don't feel comfortable and they'll use that space. Um, the other thing is if a pedestrian doesn't feel comfortable walking in the road, it gives them a safe space to do so. Um, on Southwest Orchid to Primrose, uh, we were proposing gravel shoulder on both sides. Um, and that was at 30%, that's what went out. Uh, and there's what's called a valley gutter on this side of the street. Um, and the valley gutter is designed to be lower where the water comes in, but we're actually making it higher around the curb height um, so that it captures the water. So um, there is an existing valley gutter, I think it's Southwest 14th, um, that's in the center of the street, that's another place to do it, but basically it captures the water uh, in, in a valley to convey the storm water now. Um, and then in this area, this is a little interesting. Uh, we have the stormwater facility down here. We have a pathway adjacent to it um, that does do slight switchbacks um, just to be ADA compliant on the slopes. Uh, but in this section, we need to provide access to a driveway that's there. The other thing that's going on, um, we thought about, well, let's just build a driveway and have a pathway next to it and we're good, um, is BES maintenance trucks. So when they're accessing the bottom of the facility, it's going to be lane closures on Taylor's Ferry uh, and they're going to need flaggers and that's just the world we live in. Um, but when they're accessing the top of the facility, the only good way to access it is to come in from the top. Um, and we wanted to if we build it to our shared street standard, um, we can be able to capture um, the maneuverability of some of their larger vehicles, their tractor trucks, um, when they come into plant, general routine maintenance uh, for the facility. Uh, we will introduce a curb on this side as well. So um, I was actually really concerned about the property here at the corner. Um, because the topography does drop off, and I could see, you know, if we have a bunch of water coming down the hill here, uh, I don't want to flood them out. Uh, so we're introducing curb, we're wrapping it around uh, the corner slightly, um, and 
<laughs> directing that water to an inlet that will go into um, the stormwater facility. A couple other things that are going on. We're not improving orchid or primrose or marigold here. Um, so we are looking at um, some type of uh, asphalt berm, if you will, low berm, uh, similar to what's here at 17th and primrose, uh, to direct the water, make sure we can catch some of that gravel that comes in. Um, there will also be sediment manholes in there that will be able to, um, the water is going to come in through inlets um, along the street. Uh, we have one at Primrose and another down at Orchid, but we're looking at putting another one in upstream that will capture the water and the sediment, but then we'll stop it in the sediment manholes before it gets uh, down to the bottom. So we'll be able to deal with that, pull that out of the system. Um, the reason we're doing the valley gutter and the curb and looking at this as a test is we want to, um, to ensure that we're meeting BES's needs. I mean, they need to slow the water, take the sediment out. Uh, is it a water quality facility as well? Yeah, we're going to meet the water quality standards. So, and, and to basically keep it all out of Tryon Creek, which um, apparently is a problem. <laughs> yeah, just trying to reduce yeah, the sediment in, in China Creek is your ESA list of fish and So the Tryon Stevens Creek Headwaters Plan that I mentioned earlier lists this as what's called a flexible street. It also calls out a couple other different issues. One is it's a safe route to school up to Capitol Hill. Um, two, it's one of the Southwest Trails, and I'll be there at their meeting next week to talk to them. Um, and uh, the third issue is that, you know, as a flexible street, um, it's designed that you could use a shared street standard. Um, the other thing that to keep in mind about this is this whole area is kind of in a little box. Um, Primrose doesn't go through. Uh, Marigold ends down here, uh, kind of curves and goes into a cul-de-sac. You're blocked off up here. These are dirt and gravel streets, so it's, it's kind of a nice little box there where the people who are going to be using the street are people who live there uh, and uh, emergency vehicles or lift buses and, and the like, um, but basically accessing this area of the neighborhood. We, in effect, we're, this will be a permanent closure at Taylor's Ferry. Um, right now there are Tech 2 barricades and we closed it for sightline distances. But we're, uh, BES is putting in a large stormwater facility, and we've decided we can be okay with the pathway there. Uh, in front of the stormwater facility, there is a bus stop there. Uh, we will be adding sidewalk in front of the facility, um, just because it's a bus stop, we expect people to be there. Um, it's not going to put sidewalk all along Taylor's Ferry, it's at this discrete location, but if we're going out there and spending the time and money on the project, we felt that there's a bus out there, we need to make it accessible. We're making the pathway accessible, it doesn't make sense to plant people on a shoulder and gravel. Um, the other issue uh, on the street is, since it's built to our shared street standard, um, the city accepts maintenance for the street. Now, I sent out 30% plans uh, and shared them with the neighborhood um, as well. And um, we did get some feedback, uh, but things have also changed since 30%. We have an aggressive schedule. Our schedule is hopefully going to uh, have final plans in Jan late January, early February. Um, so we're looking to bid and award this and start building this this spring. Um, I looked at the 30% plans that I sent out um, and looked at some of the tree issues. Uh, there's one tree that's right here that it looks like the roots are going to be in our gravel gravel shoulder. Um, I didn't see any reason why we couldn't narrow the gravel shoulder to not impact the tree. Um, we wanted to show it on the plans because we have to go for a tree permit um, under the new tree code. Uh, we want the urban forestry to take a, urban forester to take a look at all the trees and know what we're doing. Um, but that that the I don't know well, southernmost tree. But that tree, um, we aren't proposing to take out anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Those can go out if you want. The first one, um, we don't need to take it out. 
The second one, I don't think we need to take that one out either. We want to make sure the urban forester takes a look at it and make sure we're not doing anything. But again, you know, we can narrow the gravel shoulder. We're fine with that. And, um, and not take that one out. There's one right here that's right up at Primrose that it, when we did a field visit, had a really nasty branch coming out from it that was over the street. And we were like, ooh, that one's bad. Um, since then, someone's trimmed it. And I don't know who, and I don't work for parks, so. Well, there is that. Maybe that tree yeah. The yeah, there, Primrose is, is a right of way there. Right. Uh, and we, uh, we did initially tell BES that, you know, if you need, if, if you're going to have problems making the stormwater facility work for the amount of water that's coming down the hill when you do your modeling, we can reserve that for a stormwater facility. And, you know, even in the future, we could reserve that for a stormwater facility. Um, but uh, the tree there, some of the roots might be actually under the roadway. So that's the one that we're still on the fence about that we definitely want the urban forester to look at um, and tell us, you know, yes, the tree can stay or please save the tree or no, it's in bad shape. And, um, and that's possibly one that can go. We're not, we're not sure about that one. Um, so we definitely want them to take a look at it. Um, on this area of Orchid, on the other side of the street, uh, we, uh, we are basically going to eliminate the gravel shoulder there as well. Um, and th so there won't be parking on this side. Um, there's a driveway for the property up here at the corner of Primrose and, and Orchid. It's kind of an interesting circular driveway that has access on Primrose and Orchid. That's going to be fine. Um, and the little garage that's there, that's OK. Um, we just wouldn't do the gravel shoulder. The pavement edge <coughs> will extend to just about um, the edge of that concrete pad that the fire hydrant's on at that location at the corner. Um, beyond that, we would like some clearance uh, just to make sure we don't have a wall right up on the edge of pavement. But um, we would like some clearance from uh, the edge of pavement, five feet, I think, live uh, definitely with. Um, but we wouldn't be doing gravel shoulder there. Um, and talking with the fire bureau about the whole issue of you know your outriggers and your access, they've told me in certain cases you can go even narrower than that uh, than that 20 feet um, if it's a pinch point and you don't allow parking there. Um, along the side. We're okay with that. We can get our rigs through. Uh, the Water Bureau told me, you know, we want 25 feet. Um, and we said no, uh, because as far as public safety versus the Water Bureau, um, we'll, we'll be okay with uh, public safety. Uh, the Water Bureau has a water main there they need to access, but their vehicles are very similar to BES's vehicles. So um, we're accommodating the v BES maintenance vehicles um, the width we have there will accommodate uh, uh, the Water Bureau as well. Um, so a little bit about PBOT in general and this standard. Um, even though we have these all over the city, uh, one of the problems is that, uh, that some of our engineers are, are used to the full standard. So I, I do get, well, we could just throw a curb in and uh, we can do curve on both sides. We can incorporate all the elements that um, make a project be less affordable. Um, they're, they're trained to do that. There's a desire to do that. Um, when we talked with them about the gravel shoulders and narrowing them, some of our engineers are like, oh, no, we need that space. Um, even though there's not really a parking demand out there, even though we're pretty sure we're not going to have from a traffic safety standpoint, uh, conflicts between vehicles passing each other very often. I mean, I'm sure it'll happen, but it won't be like what you have out front here um, or on Taylor's Ferry. Uh, there, there is some nervousness there about it. Um, they want to make sure they do it right, and so we get it right. Uh, in certain cases, we definitely have flexibility with the shoulder area. Um, you know, there is an argument that you know, 16 feet of pavement is too narrow. We need 18. And my response in talking with them is, well, what's the difference if you have the area to pull over? 
Um, there is some nervousness in the Bureau. So while we do have some flexibility, um, our engineering department does have the ability to overrule me, but um, but I'm very good with working with them and making sure uh, we're going to meet the transportation needs and the traffic safety needs. So that's the short story, or the long story, on Southwest 19th and kind of how we got here. I'm happy to answer any questions um, and uh, that anybody has. Yes? Have you talked with the uh, uh, care facility that's on the front of 19th and Marigold? that has uh, regularly happening emergency vehicles that pull in to either rescue someone Almost here. or to remove someone. Uh, the parking of the people um, that come to visit in the center of the facility um, appreciate the fact that they can park along that area there, which you designated uh, sand gravel, which if it stays the way it is, they would be able to park there. Yes. Um, so, Depending on how far over they can come in the other direction, mm -hmm. coming east from. So, uh, are you talking uh, here or here? Yeah. There. That's there. the facility yeah. where your finger is. So, that will have the, the, the gravel parking area. Um, and uh, the, the idea is if it's seven foot gravel shoulder, they'll be able to use that for parking. It's typical what we use for a parking lane on the street. Um, the, the idea is so don't park on the pavement. But in a lot of cases, it's probably going to be okay. Um, we did hear from uh, emergency services that, you know, yes, please pave this street because um, Marigold, uh, actually, I have a colleague that almost bought about uh, a city vehicle on Marigold, but there's a uh, there's pretty big hill and it's a little bombed out, and the, the break in the hill is about here. Same with Primrose. Um, the good way to actually access the neighborhood, especially if you're in a larger or uh, an emergency vehicle, is to come in Orchid and then go up if 19th is paved. Um, with it unpaved, it, it makes it challenging. So um, emergency services was very supportive of, of paving that area. And we're just so happy to have the traffic on Maryville coming over from 17th. <laughs> 50% of the cars that come down there are customers yeah. trying to get to the freeway. Okay, so, so there's a lot more. I often to wondered them. about that if if that if that actually went through and they come off of 17. Okay. And uh, UPS, uh, you name FedEx, all of the trucks use that as a tough route to get in the neighborhood or get out of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So they'll probably continue doing that. Um, closing off uh, Southwest 19th at Marigold, uh, between Marigold and Lobila, um, did move quite a bit of traffic. We moved uh, about 400 to 600 vehicles uh, that now are all on 17th. Um, from the before and after data that was taken um, when that was done, um, people will still probably use that to access the freeway. Um, but if you they're going to continue to do that, the but uh, the traffic volumes are, on it, are uh, do meet the criteria for our shared street standard. So um, it would be a, a, a better conversation to be talking about, you know, uh, does Marigold in this section meet our shared street standard um, with that traffic? Um, would Orchid, um, which you know, the idea right now is that it would, um, but we would still need to actually take a look at it if we, if we were to move forward with any of the other side streets. Uh, you um, have a slide for yep. the... Um, yeah, I showed it to him. Yeah, so this just, one. Just, so as far as some context, uh, I met with uh, uh, Karen and Steve and a couple other neighbors a week ago, and we sent this letter um, on Friday. Yes. And I think we talked about um, quite a bit of it, but. Uh, um, oh, on as far as landscaping as well, um, we we are trying to minimize the amount of landscaping that's going to be disrupted as well. I mean, we are putting a road in, um, but uh, the pavement section is pretty narrow, uh, and that's why our engineers are nervous about it. They're like, oh, this is, this is so skinny. Um, so uh, trying to balance those two things. 
Um, as far as the Falcon's shoulder goes, um, once we're done, and you know, if if you have no parking demand in front of your house, and you start planting things in the gravel shoulder, um, or you know, removing the gravel and, and deciding you want to do something there, um, officially uh, we have what's called a community use uh, permit, which is a free permit that if someone wants to do community uses in the right of way that we aren't using for transportation purposes at that time, um, we can't. And um, and you know we've had areas in uh, other parts of town where they've decided they're mm -hmm. going to build benches and planters and uh, they're going to have space in the right of way that for other purposes and we'll allow them to do that with the understanding of you know things change zoning changes we get a bunch of density and uh, we're building apartments everywhere you know that could change but um, for the most part. Uh, these are areas that are like, like you zone R5, R7, R10, and um, are unlikely, and in the current comp plan update, aren't getting upzoned to anything. So, um, so we we can definitely accommodate that. Um, the other thing people talked about is is this here, the crosswalk at Taylor's Ferry, um, and it's a Southwest Trails and a safe route to school. So that's a plus in its favor. Um, the minus that I can see is that we closed Taylor's Ferry at 19th for uh, sight lines and visibility purposes. So my guess is it's probably going to need a higher level of treatment more than we couldn't just strike a crosswalk there. Uh, it might need uh, rect rectangular red flash beacons. Um, uh, basically the flashing beacons like you have on Barber. Um, although not overhead. Uh, it would probably need a treatment like that. I don't know um, because I haven't taken a look at it. And um, as a part of this project, I probably I wouldn't be able to. But um, there are two things going on. One is Southwest in Motion, uh, which we did East Portland in Motion a few years back. And um, since that time, we've gotten probably 16 to 24 million dollars worth of grants uh, for projects in East Portland based on that plan um, <coughs> over the last six years. Uh, some of the grants we haven't actually received the money yet, but we've, um, we've been told you're getting this grant for this amount. It'll appear in 2017 or 2018. Um, but we've done a lot of projects out there and the Bureau wants to replicate that in Southwest uh, and that would be one way. Um, the other way is in our TSP update, uh, transportation system plan update, um, which basically is what our upcoming projects is based upon. Um, we created a program called um, uh, pedestrian crossings, basically, or pedestrian safety, um, and it's to help people get across busier streets, prioritizing areas um, that are on busier arterials, of course, um, but also that have a, a different nexus that providing access to transit, which we have quite a bit on Taylor's Ferry, um, safe routes to school, um, pedestrian network, and Southwest Trails, those kinds of things. So um, that is, I think, next year about to start up. So that would be another place to plug in. Um, we're doing, uh, we're updating our system development charges to include those programs. So um, I, rapid flash beacons, I mean, I was in the capital program, now I work with development and permitting and transit, and um, in the capital program when I built those, depending on the location, you're talking sixty dollars to $100,000 for installation, so um, they are pricier. Yes? Have a clarification, do you mind going back to the other slide? Sure. This one? Yes. Okay. I'm just checking with my understanding of what you said. We live on the corner of uh, Maribold and 19. Fair. Yep. And you know that Maribold going towards 17 is the Grand Canyon and yes. the Farm Park. So we haven't been able to park, have any parking in front of our house. And I'm, if I'm understanding, now we've had other people, people parking down between Marigold and Primrose. 
So is with this plan, is that taking away all of our parking there as well? Um, you would be able to park on this side of the street. On this side of the street with the curb, the fire bureau doesn't want us to um, include parking there. So um, on this side of the street, you wouldn't be able to. On this side, you would. On the west side? Yes. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm sensitive to the fact that there is so much parking and activity in front of the care facility mm -hmm. that realistically we wouldn't be able to use that. May I make a comment? Yes. I am here. Sir. And we have any car except maybe once in a while in which for the county they can come. And I have five parking lots of what we do. I don't even know what we said about parking lots. So Maribel does have curb on it uh, on to the west here. And I have five parking lots. So um, you know, from from a standpoint of just my behavior and the behavior I notice in others, a lot of people like to park uh, next to a curb. Um, if you have a gravel shoulder, not a lot of people, if it's there, they'll park on it, but but people like to park next to a curb as well, so they feel more comfortable doing that. Um, looking at the parking demand out here, uh, you know, when I was out there um, and when I, my colleagues have been out there to uh, do some site visits, assessments, survey work, that kind of thing. Um, we really haven't seen anybody parking on uh, on the street on 19th, and partially that's probably because it's it's kind of bombed out. There are these canyons down through it. Um, you know, the biggest parking demand we saw was that this corner property at, at Primrose uh, and 19th, and in that circular driveway, and it was all people in the driveway. I mean. There were there were cars in there. So, um, looking at the parking demand, we were uh, really concerned about parking, and that's one of the reasons why we thought you know it's okay to narrow this gravel shoulder because you know sometimes you're gonna have events, people over, parties, whatnot, um, and and yeah, there will be people parking there uh, as there would be today, but in general. Um, the parking is not well utilized, and people generally use their driveways or um, or their own property to park their cars. Yes. The property you just mentioned on that uh, part of Primrose or the garage. Yes. And the uh, the street is uh, uneven to be charitable, and plus it slopes off. What consideration, if any, is given to? We will totally allow you to access your existing garage. That's as far as you know, maybe some feet, maybe your car will run out as you get into the garage. Um, so there will be a gap between the edge of pavement and um, and the garage, and it's it. I don't think it's going to be that significant, but I can talk to the engineer and make sure. Um, we could put some gravel across there, but. Um, the, the gap is intended um, to give you space to get in and out. It's If we had a gravel shoulder there, you would have a gravel shoulder there. We can look at you know going ahead and putting in the gravel shoulder there. But your access to your driveways and your access to your garages will uh, will not be impacted. Well, the concern is that you get the grade of the street so low, yeah. it would break over at a steep angle and your car would bottom out. Oh, OK, I got gotcha. you. So at this section, um, at this top section, we're shedding this way with the water. And it'll be caught in the inlets here and um, then go across to the side of the street. In this section here, we're shedding this way. Um, and it's a 2% grade. It's not significant. But, um, but this would, for lack of a better <laughs> word, be the high end of the street. So the water is intended to go this way. Um, we. You know, I'll have our engineer take a look at it, but um, I don't think access to your garage or bottoming out is going to be an issue for you. Um, and that is actually something we look at when uh, we're designing streets and street connections. With a shared street, it's a little bit different because of that gravel shoulder area, but um, but you you shouldn't have a problem with it. What would be a good point 
from a certain point on, you have to make sure that you know how You know, I can write down my contact information for you, but I'll check with our engineer tomorrow. Okay. Your, your contact information. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I'm happy to write it down for you as well. Yes. Yeah, uh, the point was originally raised that there was a lot of cut through traffic. Mm -hmm. And it's more than I ever expected because when people go from Southwest Taylor's Ferry Road to Access Ferry, if they go up south of 17th, they're running into schools. And during rush hour times, that place is completely choked off. And yes. So they, they will cut to the neighborhood five or six church cars in the morning and the evening. They're cutting through a marigold. They don't go up uh, Southwest 19th because it's too difficult to transit. But uh, the fade in the street is going to attract a lot of traffic. One of the complaints we heard from the neighborhood in the neighborhood was that people were blasting up that street and four-wheel drives because they were But they got a tremendous amount of traffic and accelerated all the way up. So I've got deep concerns about traffic calming. I know it's going to attract a lot of traffic and it's a fair street. Right. And simply making it wider won't help. Posting the speed on it is not helpful. ITE says that the Institute of Traffic Engineers that's no, so the narrowness of the street is yeah, going to be right. some traffic calming. Um, we will be monitoring it. We have counts for Marigold, Primrose, Orchid, and, and 19th currently. Yeah. And we've had our um, our traffic engineers looking at it to see, you know, do we need to do more? Um, we could introduce stop control. So there currently isn't any stop control. Um, some of our traffic engineers feel that's a good thing because it makes people look and see if they're they don't know what oh someone you could pull out. Um, well, we could introduce stop control. Um, we could look at actual traffic calming and, and put um, since it's a, since I wouldn't want to impact drainage too much. They'd probably be something like speed cushions, but basically uh, smaller type speed bumps, um, but uh, we definitely, since this is one of the first official ones we're building, um, we definitely want this to succeed. So, uh, go back to that picture that we sort of proposed? Yep. So, when you go to the far left, see where we changed the roadway to a driveway. I realize you want to get into the EDS truck, although the slopes are really steep, and I'm unsure at a 12% slope whether you're back to the truck operators are going to like but I'm afraid that if you make that a straight street people are going to go down at night and they're not going to be cued that that's a dead end street oh. and they're going to go blasting right off the end and I don't think you can put enough barricades up so we will have the um, they'll be doing 30 miles an hour they'll run right over the top of it so we will have uh, the barricades there's also a curve down here at the bottom yeah. Um, I can't so, see why you need to offset the street four feet in our mm -hmm. direction and wipe out so much of our landscape. That's just the driveway. You don't have to, uh, the geometry of the intersection doesn't have to be square. Right. Um, so without that, I don't know why you're offsetting the street four feet. The, the reason is um, is the slope here and it's true, getting the storm water. Making it through intersection is closely relevant. So if you make a driveway, and an offset, you both discourage people from driving through that and killing themselves, and you also center the street and you don't end up wiping out some of this. We, we did look at that initially, um, and, and it was uh, to facilitate uh, the maintenance of the stormwater the facility. It doesn't be a maintenance on a problem, and an offset intersection is not a problem. Oh, not from its support, but offset in an intersection. You can still do what you want. And, and we do have an offset intersection. I can talk to our engineers and see if we could shift it even more, um, or if we could shift it the other way. Um, I, I do know that we were concerned of, about the slope here and making sure water got down here as well. I think if you narrow the hood off for a back to truck access, wants a 12 foot or 16 foot access, but they don't even require pavement. Right. So you can put 16 feet of gravel and pave down the middle of it 10 feet. Reduce your stormwater impacts and offset that as far as you want it to. It doesn't make any difference. Um, the other issues we have going in here are utilities as well. So um, we have offset that. intersection doesn't change your utilities. Right, but um, we're putting in um, a uh, 
a sediment manhole yeah. that has a stormwater line running through it. So we yeah. also have a sanitary sewer, sewer there as well, and a water main, and then the laterals going through. So we have a lot of utility complex we're trying to resolve and make sure we get things in the right place, um, as well as making sure we have that access for the maintenance. Right, but we're also putting in another sewer line. A storm sewer line that's uh, daisy chaining the inlets. So okay, so I'm happy to bring this uh, back, and uh, you know I have your contact information, so yeah, I can get you a response pretty quickly. It's a little disingenuous to put in gravel shoulders at a 10 percent or 12 percent slope because they're in a row, and then to say, well, if you don't really like them, you can cover them anyway. It would be much better to put in permanent parking bays. They're going to have a lot less erosion. Their place to slow your water down because I calculate the flows in your valley better over eight feet per second. That's the power of the country. It's not going to be a successful design. So I'm not the one to talk about stormwater um, just because, you know, as far as transportation goes, but um, BES did model it and did model it with um, several different types of storm events. So, um, and they modeled it with a larger area um, than just the street. They wanted to capture the adjacent side streets and uphill. Um, so they did a wider, almost basin wide. Yeah, so the MS4 basin area is what they based the modeling on how much water it's going to take, how fast it's going. And, you know, I basically, they were already doing their stormwater facility, and I told them that, you know, that's fine. We, we will talk about conveyance, and that's why we're putting in the sediment manholes and looking at extra inlets, and that's also why we offered up at the get-go, you know, if you need this area right here uh, for uh, an additional stormwater facility to catch some of that water and slow it down, we're okay with that. Um, frankly, I can't say this from an official policy standpoint, but from my uh, project background, we're probably never going to build this street. So if we put a stormwater facility in there, that's probably OK. Um, and if in the future we are building that street because of development, um, you know, then at that point it can change and we can we can alter it. But if they need this area for a stormwater facility to catch some of that water and slow it down, we're happy to do that. Um, you know, as far as the, the parking is concerned, the other reason I mentioned that we want to have those gravel shoulder areas is for cars to create that queuing situation where one can pull off, or for pedestrians, if they're not comfortable walking in the street, to have an area for them to walk. Um, so that's one of the reasons we have the gravel shoulder. We're okay with narrowing it, but again, um, our traffic engineers and our civil engineers are, are very nervous. This is like... In, first new street that we're building about this, even though, you know, we do have them throughout the city, um, they feel a certain amount of uh, trepidation about about the standard. City engineers signed off on it, but um, we want to make sure we evaluate it and and make sure it's meeting our needs. And, you know, in the future, if, if we can, um, we we're looking at making some of those changes. Um, just to keep, I mean, it's more cost for us to gravel that, and it's more cost for us to to grade it out. So, again, with trying to keep the project costs low, um, we're going to take an active look at that. Oh, you're not building the street. The street's been there since about 1985, and right now it's taking traffic and pedestrians on about a 14 foot gravel site. And so, why would that make the pavement? Saying we need three times that way. It's the hard argument to support. Um, if you provide a great section of road to introduce dangerous conditions for pedestrians, provide a choke and a chicane and, mm -hmm. and make sure the bottom is clearly identified as not a good street, right. save a lot of people, and save a lot of people, and make the street a lot safer. I can't imagine why that's a good idea. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely not saying that, but um, we will be signing this as a shared street. Um, that's part of the state law. We have to designate it as a shared street officially. Um, and we will have uh, not only barricades here, but we can look at other things we can do to not encourage people to come down here. 
Um, there's, there is some cut through traffic here, uh, but the majority of the traffic is all within this area. And, you know, a lot of people who are cut through traffic have been probably doing it for years. I mean, it's not an easy place to get into. Um, and that's part of the reason this section was closed. And, you know, we're not looking at doing anything there. So, um, but that's part of the reason this section was closed to, to help mitigate some of that. Um, we're not going to make anything worse with the cut through traffic and, and increase it. And that's in the judgment of our traffic engineers. Um, you know, improving this section does have utility for all modes and also emergency vehicle access um, and uh, lift access. Um, and, you know, we're going to be actively monitoring it. Um, chicanes, you know, they work really well from a traffic safety standpoint, uh, but they do have a problem with water commit standpoint. So I think um, for the most part, that's why we didn't go with a, a chicaning type idea. Um, in flatter areas, that works really well, um, but in other areas, uh, we would be dropping off sediment and chicaning over and then picking up more sediment because the water is going to go where it wants to go and maybe creating other problems. So we wanted to be so sure that... Can I, can I fix the right. So, I, you know... The top one is on the uphill side of your road, so that can't be a strong one. I know um, Ryan is actually uh, taking a look at at what was sent, and also we, we got um, your follow-up email, and he's provided some feedback, and I wanted to check in with our um, uh, planning, uh, senior planner who, who did this Try and Stevens headwater plan to make sure we're, we're conforming with it. Um, but um, we, we actually are getting quite a bit of water up here. Um, BES was, trying to talk about doing a sediment trap at this location uh, to pull some of that sediment out that we're getting off of Marigold and off of 19th as well. And some of it goes around the corner and down the hill, but, uh, but we are getting quite a bit of sediment here. Um, we don't want to do a sediment trap there. And the reason is we don't want you to have water problems. So the property here, we don't want to create something that it fills up with sediment um, is maintained or very well, but you know things happen, or you know maybe it's not maintained as well. Um, and really, not trying to kick you under the bus, but yes, but sometimes things happen. It fills up with sediment, and and then they have a water infiltration problem. So that's why we're looking at an inlet down here, and we're looking at sediment manholes to go ahead and pull that sediment off. I mean, and again, I didn't do the um, the uh, water modeling. That we left to be yes. So the stormwater modeling was all handled by them, and um, they feel that the existing stormwater facility is going to meet their needs. Um, it may not be rounded. Um, yeah, there's still some design. I mean, we're still in the design phase. There's yes. still some design modifications, and likely it's probably not going to be that round and um, shape. And but for the modeling, they feel that that uh, size of the facility um, with the weirs there uh, it is going to meet their needs. So um, we're, we're helping them with the walls on the facility, but yes. So on this plan, where exactly is the stormwater facility? Um, on this one? Yeah. It appears down here. Um, on the, on the, and, and this was provided by the neighborhood. On, on this one? You can't really see it, but it's these three little dots down here. Um, so it's at the very end there where it's currently closed off and there are a bunch of barricades. Um, that will have a large uh, stormwater facility with three tiers um, and then a pedestrian path adjacent to it uh, that will, of course, be ADA accessible. Is that similar to what we are seeing for Florida down on Taylor's Ferry? On, on 17th and Taylor's Ferry? Right. Oh, yeah, it's okay. similar to that. Thank you. And it's also similar to the slide that was shown earlier of um, uh, 26th and Harbor. Yes. I have a question. Um, near Zahara Rahmani's home, or foster care facility, as well as at the bottom at Taylor's Ferry, it is really dark. Did you say there's anything in there with lighting? Or is it oh, you know, we can um, talk to our street lighting engineers. Um, 
I don't have any lighting in my project, um, but I can definitely talk to our street lighting group. Um, we do have uh, the ability to put in street lights, uh, and we do get requests for it. So, um, you know, if we are doing uh, a street there, we are trying to expand pedestrian and bicycle activity and access. It is a shared street. It would make sense that um, that they take a look at lighting and make sure it's available. Safe and streets, sufficient. safe yes. for pedestrians. Is it dark near the bus stop, Taylor Square? Is that where you're? Yes, yeah, so it's dark down at the bottom and, and dark at the top. And I don't know about the middle. <laughs> Anybody can speak about the middle in there? It's not really well lit. As a walker, no, I've been through there. It's, it's dark. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, when, when can we see the latest information? As soon as I get them back from drafting. Um, and right now they're CAD files, so um, and I don't think we've submitted them for drafting. We're trying to address the comments that we got back um, internally and also address the comments that we got um, from folks that contacted us. So, as soon as they're available, I'm happy to provide them. Um, you know, as far as an estimate, Yes, you're doing a great job, and you're very aggressive. <laughs> um, uh, the end, the end of next week, uh, BES was saying they might be ready with their pieces. I can see if we can go ahead and submit ours to drafting to mm -hmm. actually get something on paper. Um, we're kind of weirdly divided. Um, we're gonna basically have two plan sets, but it's gonna be one bid package. Um, so. We can go ahead and do our plans, but we just want to make sure we're not um, going to be doing something that's in conflict with BES. I mean, the conveyance system, BES really, rightly, cares about that. Um, <laughs> and uh, even though it's on our plan sheets, uh, they're, they're, they're going to have an opinion about it, so we want to make sure they're okay with it. Um, but I can see what we have, and even Barring that, um, and see if there's a, bit, a way we can get the CAD file uh, printed to a PDF, um, even though it won't look like the plan sheets I sent out, um, you'll still be able to possibly ascertain that. Um, and I, so I think we're ahead of BES and going to drafting. Should we, I'm hoping we should be submitted this week, um, but uh, it might be next week. Um, depending on BES's schedule. So. And then um, usually drafting, I, I'm a nag, um, but usually uh, drafting takes sometimes by a uh, week to a week and a half. So yeah, on a project of this size, larger projects. Yes? Um, could you just, I don't really know where the curve point um, between Orchid and Primrose, there will be no curb? Yes, there will. From Orchid to Primrose on 19th. Oh, oh, on this one. Property, okay. This Where is that? Curb? Down on this. I think Eric's, your property is here, right? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, um, you're, 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 yeah. you're not getting a curb. On this side of the street, there will be a valley gutter, and there will be um, the shoulder area. Where, there doesn't be a curb on that. So the curb's going to be between Marigold and Primrose on... There's no curb on the lower side. Correct. There's a valley gutter. I understood, I thought you said there was a curb on the Okay, it's a valley gutter, right? Yes. Yeah, and uh, you, you're able to drive over that um, if you want to park on the shoulder there, depending on um, where you want to park. Uh, because if we narrow the shoulder um, around the trees, there won't be enough room. Because in my right away along my fence there, mm -hmm. there is an old rain along the it wasn't used when I moved it one of the years ago. That's no longer used. But that's what the water is used for right now. Uh -huh. I don't know how you guys do anything about it. Um, we'll probably leave it as is. Okay. Um, that area will be touched in that section. Correct. Correct. Once we. Uh, well, it's and in the right away. Really, it, it is in the right away, and we're. Yes, the, the, Brad, do you think. I think these the right are your plum trees, right? Probably. <laughs> yeah, two plum trees. Right? Yeah, so. Everything from the other side of the plum trees um, in this section up here will remain as is. We're not well, doing anything. The plum trees are right along my property line. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, the roots, uh, the circles are kind of where 
okay. um, where the roots would extend. Mm -hmm. So beyond the plum trees, um, you're probably not going to see anything except maybe in this section you'll see the gravel shoulder, um, depending on. So I will stop because that lower section right in front of my house on mm -hmm. 19th. That's where I do park. Yeah. So there will be parking available. Right? Yeah, beyond okay. the plum trees, uh, yeah. okay. closer to. Okay. Yeah. So that you already have a car between the trash and the street. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No, no problem. The hell is it? But you know, the, the, tri the Triumph Stevens, um, I don't know if there's a neighborhood park that's called the Street Park. Yes. Has some good um, diagrams of what, like, the valley gutter and the such. Um, there is uh, one that shows with a curve um, because, funnily, you know, as they were writing the plan and getting ready for council, this whole issue was starting to emerge and um, we were starting to talk to BES about it. So, um, and we're doing this project in Arrow Heights, and I told them, you know, we're okay with the curve on one side. Um, they put a stormwater facility behind the curve there. Um, which is something we can do certain places, but in this case, um, the neighborhood facility will capture that area. So, uh, in some cases, in some places, uh, we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing a stormwater facility behind the curb, and not one of the larger facilities. In this case, since the larger facility was already underway, um, we match that. Um, <coughs> I've been sitting here for a while just kind of processing my thoughts around how the traffic engineers who said that they feel confident mm -hmm. that that this one line could be wrong and I'm <coughs> I'm also registered for them. I've just been sitting here trying to figure out what they're basing their conclusions on and I know you'll make a formal response to the letter sure. that was sent. Um but I Kind of hoping for some type of an early switch, so to speak. Right. Um, that if you're going to build the road straight, and we're very concerned that we're going to have increased traffic volume. Um, if then you have to come in and repair it if that happens. Right. Well, can we be more proactive and re revisit the conclusion that we won't have increased traffic volumes and being able to do the project all at once and not have additional? Sure. So, when we got the comments, um, we are taking a look at them and, and we'll be able to respond to them. Yeah. Um, what, and we are taking a look at it again. You know, we, we have a, a, a traffic engineer that's on the project, we have um, his boss, uh, which is his section supervisor, that's taking a look at this because this is something new. Um, the other thing is we're, we're um, definitely going to be evaluating this after the fact. Um, so, you know, there's often a concern when the city does something that, oh, well, you're going to do it and we're just going to be stuck with consequences. Um, since this is something that, one, we want to evaluate. Two, we want to replicate other areas citywide. Um, we want to make sure we're doing it right. Um, how they made those determinations is, for the most part, based on existing volume, um, and also based on the changes that happened when Southwest 19th up here was closed and the traffic was moved more to 17th. Um, when when those things happened, uh, we did counts also to see, you know, we're making this change. Is this something that that at least Pilot can live with? Um, and saw how much traffic was moved on to 17th. It probably made the problem worse on 17th, and so that's why you probably see people continue to cut through the neighborhood, um, uh, just because of what you're describing with uh, with the issues up near the schools and at peak hour, uh, where there's going to be a problem. But um, that's what they were, for the most part, not being the traffic engineer, but uh, that's what they base their decisions. I'd like to know whether any of the traffic counts occurred before Southwest 19 became so difficult to take the pass. And since we've been there, the rest of the road has become a small, small creek. Yes. <laughs> so the concern is there were counts by 
but it was easier to pass. Yes. That rule. Yes, there were. So, um, and we have pretty consistent counts. Um, I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe um, the closure at Southwest 19th up here happened at a different time than the closure down at Taylor's Ferry as well. So, um, when we make closures like that, we like to evaluate it afterwards to ensure we're not having adverse impacts. Um, we have what's called a diversion curve that, um, that we need to follow. In most cases, when we're blocking something off, um, we've become a lot stricter um, since uh, since these closures happen. Um, and so now we have a whole set of criteria that we have to go through. But um, uh, before we even say yes to a closure, uh, but uh, yeah, we we take accounts at, at various different times. I mean, uh, we have heard from some people on 17th that you know. They don't like that we close 19 um, because it's put more pressure on 17. You know, um, I at this point I can't do anything about the closures uh, that happened in the past, and frankly, I'm unwilling to revisit the one at Maribel the 19th unless we're having a broader conversation of you know improving the dirt and gravel streets in the area and and engaging the community for this test project. Um, I I basically so my colleagues that I'm not going to touch that one. Um, so. I've got this parade of toddlers who will stay with about 11 a.m. Yes. And I watch walk up past our house and they probably, the biggest priority that I feel is the safety of pedestrians. Because it's used a lot. Yes. So that could also be an area where you know they're going to come back and say proactively well we want to introduce some stop control and um to help control that and you know that might lead to helping control some of the issues that you're concerned about with people driving into the solar facility um you know i wish i could say that doesn't happen people don't normally do that but yeah we have people driving into solar I feel like a comment about traffic. Um, yes. Before they close the Jesus Ferry, go up at 19th, it was really bumpy. You had to see the whole drive. One neighbor always came up with it. You always see the funniest thing that I always saw all the time people with brand new SUVs would come up there. Up 19th, it's really hard. And if you just go you know, brand new $50,000 SUV, you know, probably the whole time they have a big four wheel. And that, that, by closing 19, uh -huh. that ended that. They saw that really We have so the exact that, same issue day. behind Jackson back there, 41st and mm -hmm. Thomas. We're hearing from the neighbors back there that, you know, um, we we want our street closed. And we have this new criteria that, you know, it's it's a lot harder to do. Um, but they say, you know, every time what weather comes around, we have people four-wheel driving, having fun. It's, mm -hmm. it's the radio. Uh, you can have that on Southwest 19th as well, people doing that, but I mean, if it's paved, so they're not going to do it anymore. So. Yeah. So, yes? Um, the uh, private or the private, right? The uh, addressing the uh, residents on 18th, mm. this is fine. Uh, that, or oh, 17th? Way. Yeah, I'm a. 19th. Oh, 19th. Uh, 19th. Oh, okay. 19th. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Will that driveway take a sustained rain in that? Is it specifically a driveway drive for that house? Or? Uh, this one down here? Right. Um, so we're going to leave the existing driveway the way it is. Okay. Um, the water, um, and maybe it's better on your drawing. Um, so the water is intended to come down and, and access the uh, inlet here to go into the stormwater facility and have a uh, what's called a flow control manhole to control the flow so we're not blowing out their stormwater facility um, with the water coming down the hill. Um, the driveway will remain uh, as it is and the water will be heading heading this direction to to those uh, flow control manhole okay. and it will be paved to the driveway. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is going to be paved to the driveway? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, so uh, we stopped right at the driveway. I didn't want to just bring in a rock and watch it wash right over your pathway. So oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then the pathway will start on the other side of your driveway. Um, and uh, we, 
we're debating whether we need to throw in a baller. We probably don't. Um, you know, it's going to be a fairly narrow pathway, uh, probably six to eight feet wide. People might try driving on it, so that's why we're, we're thinking, well, maybe we need a baller. We have a slope there that flattens out at your driveway. Um, so we, we don't know if, like, if we put in a baller if the cyclist coming down will run into the baller. So that's, we're, we're still mulling that one over. The only problem you'll have is you come from the Yeah, they tried that once. <laughs> um, the pathway will be asphalt pathway, though. <clears throat> It, it will switch back a little bit um, just so we can maintain a, a ADA a grade for a pathway. Um, so we can't have it be a 12% slope. I think we can deal with the 10, but 8%. Um, so. You're going to take out all the poplars? Um, you, you know, the only trees we're looking at taking out um, would be maybe that one that's up here at Primrose. Maybe one of the plums, but we're we're kind of thinking yeah, no. The poplars are right in the middle of the street. Yeah, they might be, be some with the storm. Oh, with the storm actually. Right. Okay, yeah. I've, I've tried to uh, maliciously ignore the storm facility. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure it meets their needs and yeah. <sighs> Have we exhausted you yet? <laughs> Have we exhausted you yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exhausted. Well, we're getting short on time. We have seven more minutes left in the meeting. Um, if you want to make a motion to table the rest of what's on the agenda and continue with them, or if you'd like to thank them and let them relax, it's your choice. I'm, I'm here to facilitate the process. <laughs> so, any choices? <laughs> so, anything else? Any other questions we need answered here? And you know, if you received a mailing from me or if you got my contact information through the neighborhood, yeah, feel free to give me a call, send me an email. Um, and we definitely are happy to hear from you if you have suggestions, comments, concerns. Um, we're, that's what we're here for. And if you haven't received any mailing, if you're interested, you can contact us. And, and if you picked up one of these, good. If not, your contact information is on here as well. There's also uh, actually got the project which has both of our phone. Yeah. So relative. So um so that's a good way to get in contact with us. Um I'll also add my contact information and provide that electronically to the neighborhood so you guys have it too. Um the only other thing I throw in there that's on the back of the fact sheet is what's called the local transportation infrastructure charge. Um, and one of the things, another project I'm working on is moving from on dirt gravel streets, a frontage improvement based model to um, a uh, fee based model. So currently what the situation is, uh, developing comes in on your dirt and gravel street and um, they say, are told they have to do their frontage improvements um, and they say no and they go through an appeals process and it's a nine month ordeal for the developer, but in the end we go, okay, you're you're on a dirt gravel street and it's local service, it doesn't make sense for you to do that, and here's a waiver of remonstrance. Then the developer sells the property, and the new property owner has what's called the waiver of remonstrance. Um, theoretically, what that's supposed to do is help eventually put together LIDs and get streets built. Um, that really hasn't happened in the city. A lot of property owners don't know they have what's the, these waivers of remonstrance, which basically means if we're forming an LID, you're an automatic yes. You can still come to council and use your First Amendment or, or uh, freedom, freedoms of speech, but um, but you're technically an automatic yes. It really hasn't worked. So why we're switching to a fee-based model is we're saying to the developer, yeah, we're still going to give you a waiver, and that's great, but um, you're going to pay a fee. And we haven't adopted this yet. This is coming probably around in February, but we've been working on it um, with uh, neighborhood stakeholders and also with um, developers and city staff, where we'll still get the waiver, but we'll get a fee. 
And we would be able to apply those fees to um, transportation projects. In getting this, um, the neighborhood uh, folks that we worked with, and Marianne Fitzgerald from Sweeney was, was on the committee, as well as other members uh, from throughout the city. Um, uh, one thing we did tell them was that, OK, it, there's a lack of credibility here with the city, and you don't feel like we would then be correctly, um, so that's why you want to pose it. We'll not spend the fee, we'll collect it, but um, we'll start off the process starting in 2016, um, it'll probably be March, uh, where we'll figure out how we're going to spend this fee. So that's a potential revenue stream to also go into writing down the LIDs and um, paying your route streams. I just thought I'd give you a heads up since it's on the handout. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your neighborhood contacts for this project are Phil Richmond, our past president, and Jeff Monahan, our transportation chair. Those two have been working with Kyle and Lisa on this project. So if you have questions, you can get with them, and, and they should be able to answer your questions or, or help you out. So thank you very much, Kyle and Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so at this point... Um, we're back to our agenda. We have a lot of things left to do, but we don't have to do them if someone would like to make a motion to table it for our next meeting. Um, if there's anything that anyone feels is very important and we need to discuss with me, we'll certainly do that. Just let me know what it is you would like to do at this point, because we are two minutes from our stop time. Jeff? I move that we table. <laughs> Jeff moves that we table. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Discussion. We have a treasurer here. Could he give his treasury report? Uh, he could. There's not much to report, but um, Jeff, would you like to report on this page right here? Let's see. The last two months we've had our revenue come from uh, Ed Meyer quarterly uh, rewards program. Eight. $84, and we had a big chunk of expenses in October incurred from the night out in uh, the summer. We paid for it, paid off the last of those expenses. And um, our current balance as of November 30th is $43. I've copied the um, financial reports with added detail behind you to see what the expenses were for. Um, that's a lot of things we kind of store right now, as you can see. So. We put that we got the $84 and 65 cents from Fred Meyer rewards for people shopping at Fred Meyer's. Nothing is taken away from their rewards. It's just an addition that's given to the neighborhood based on the number of uh, rewards that you accumulate. So if you can, pick up one of those sheets over there uh, for Fred Meyer rewards and go online and sign up for it, and the neighborhood will benefit. Uh, you get your rewards, and we'll also get some, too. I don't know if I missed this, but have we decided what we're going to do with the uh, question the other neighborhood? Uh, yes, they are coming to our next meeting okay. in January. They've been invited. I shouldn't say they're coming. They've been invited to our next January meeting. <laughs> so uh, so uh, anything else? You good? Okay. So um, there are other things that are in the works, but we can certainly cover it next month if, if you would like to adjourn. We had a tabling and we had a discussion, and we had, we had a tabling motion and a second, so um, we kind of messed that up, didn't we? <laughs> so all those, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of tabling the rest of the agenda until the next meeting, say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries. We will all see you all next month. But before you go, one last slide. That's the very end. At the bottom of your agenda, there are, John, thank you for very much for coming. Your report is very important, and we'll get it next month. Um, at the very bottom of your agenda is... Um, the, the next meetings for this, this certain chairs, public transportation, land, and so on, as well as um, signing up for our newsletter, going to sign up for Southwest News Sweeney's paper, 
Um, so just check on here on the bottom of your agenda for that. And then just go to our website if you need to have more information. Or contact me on the website. So any other questions before we adjourn? If anyone is willing to stay after to help to kind of scoop the tails back in the middle and put the chairs around, that would be appreciated. Otherwise, have a very uh, good holiday season. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next January. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. And, uh, seconded? Second. Okay, Jeff. Seconds. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we know what uh, Valley Gutters. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see if it was the line. Good night, everybody.